I'm I'm sorry I was so awkward about it before. I think I lost my nerve. It's just that all those years with Beth, I I didn't think I would be able. You know what I mean? Yes, I know. You know, when I was at Bamfield, I used to look at you and Beth, and you seemed to be the only real people there. You were so happy together. I used to resent it. The perfect couple, and there I was, floundering about on my own. And now, here you are. It's amazing. You're not a bit like I thought you would be. I don't ever want to forget, Beth. And I don't want you to. Oh, don't worry, David. I'm not going to be difficult. I like being on my own. And I know exactly what I want from you. I think. Cold coffee's all right, you know, once you acquire the taste for it. <laughs> Julia? Hmm? Will you marry me? Oh, David, you don't have to say that. No, I mean it. Will you? No, of course not. Oh. Why not? Lots of reasons. David, I think you're a lovely man, and you do seem to like me, especially here. But we don't really love each other, do we? Don't we? You know we don't. And anyway, I'd always be second best for you after Beth, and I'm afraid that that would not appeal to me one bit. So you've thought about it? Oh, yes. But I am much better at resisting temptation these days. And I don't think you realize just how much I like my job here. It's something I'm really good at, at last. And I enjoy being a free spirit. Oh, don't look so glum, David. Can't you see what a terrible idea it would be? I would make the worst schoolmaster's wife ever. You love Bamfield, don't you? Yes, I do. Mm. Well, I loathe and detest it. You're exaggerating. No, I'm not. David, you will make a most marvellous headmaster if they have the sense to give you the job, but can you honestly imagine me there, in a pair of little white gloves, shaking hands with the bishop on Founder's Day? Yes, I can. Well, you've got a far more vivid imagination than I have. Oh, but thank you, David. Thank you very, very much for asking me. I'm not going to give up that easily. I'll be popping into that shop of yours when you least expect it. Well, that'll be lovely, but don't leave it too long, will you? I... Well, I might not be there towards midsummer. But I thought you were so happy there. Yes, I am. But Hiram is thinking of sending me to America. He wants me to look it over with a view to opening the chain of shops there. Exciting, isn't it? How long for? Just a couple of months. He seems to think an awful lot of you. Yes. Yes, he does. And I of him. Of course, he's not a patch on you in many ways. What a shame you're so much in love with that dreadful school. Still, we can't have everything, can we? <laughs> Extraordinary clergyman's in the news again, Mr. Alcock. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Harris. Hey, where are my shoes? Uh, oh, you're right, oh, that nice little man who was defrocked last summer. He's proposing to preach sermons in a bathing suit on the pier now. Perhaps we could go for the day. I'm afraid I did not follow the case. Oh, bacon, what an ambrosial smell. Some go for honeysuckle and roses, but it's fried bacon for me every time. Good morning, Alcock. Sleep well? Thank you, yes, Mr. Harris. Oh, good. good. Uh, 
I haven't got time for breakfast, Algie. You're late already. Oh, Ellie, please. Think of the long hours of boredom ahead of us. Look at the time. Must be fast. No? Did you get your bacon and eggs, Alcock? I've had quite sufficient, thank you, Mr. Harris. Mr. Alcock and I have been waiting for you for half an hour, Algie. Well done, good man Alcock. I cannot abide unpunctuality. Algie? Now what? Those are odd socks. Yes, they are a bit strange, dear. You can't possibly go like that. Too late now, dear, too late. I'll try and keep them out of sight. Right then. We'll just have a cup of tea and then I'll walk you over. So, back from the flesh pots and ready for the fray, are we? I do hope the excitement of the British Museum reading room didn't prove too much for you. I uh, <clears throat> didn't actually manage to get round to going there. Ah, excellent. I thought I discerned a sort of glow about you. Do you think he glows, Barnaby? Yes, indeed. You'll dazzle them, PJ, with your gleaming collar, if not with your eloquence. It's ten past nine. Do you think I ought to be getting over there? My dear chap, of course not. You're on your home ground. You must stroll into the waiting room with one minute to spare. A daunting vision of calm confidence. Kindly nod to the other candidates, a jovial greeting to the bertha, then out with your crossword, which you complete in ten minutes. Doesn't matter what you write, so long as they see you filling in all the spaces. Have you seen Carter? Bag of nerves. Trembling like a leaf. He was pacing up and down here half an hour ago until Barnaby pointed out that he'd cut himself shaving and bled all over his collar. Then with a great howl of anguish, he fled back to his house to change and hasn't been seen since. Poor chap. I know how he feels. Harden your heart, man. They appoint Carter. We'll all have to leave the sinking ship. I'm certainly too old to serve in his private army. I wish I knew what they were going to ask us. Oh, I should think it'd be pretty routine for you and Carter. They know you well enough, you'll be judging your records. It's the outsiders they'll be interested in, Pettigrew and Alcock. Have they arrived yet? They both stayed overnight. I took Pettigrew over this morning. Poor oh, fellow's in a dreadful state of confusion. Absolute no hope, I'd say. Alcock stayed with Algie Harris. I guess their evening was... Rather less than uproarious. Very cold fish, that was my impression. Perhaps a stuffed pike. <laughs> oh, God, I wish it was all over. Courage, more brave. In an hour or two it will be. Ah, oh, Carter. Staunch the flow, I see. Yes. Morning, PJ. Morning. Shall we walk across together? Yes. All right. <laughs> well, it's not a bad old place, eh? Bit the worse for wear here and there, but then which of us isn't, eh? <laughs> Oh, well, never mind. It's an easy-going sort of school, I like to think. First-class staff, by and large, and I believe in letting them get on with it. Nice boys, too, as boys go. Can't remember when I last had to beat one of them. Yes, things have never reached the point where that is... I'm... I'm sorry I was so awkward about it before. I think I lost my nerve. It's just that... All those years with Beth, I... I didn't think I would be able... You know what I yes, mean? Yes, I know, I know. You know, when I was at Bamfield, I used to look at you and Beth, and you seemed to be the only real people there. You were so happy together. I used to resent it. The perfect couple, and there I was, floundering about on my own. And now, here you are. It's amazing. You're not a bit like I thought you would be. I don't ever want to forget, Beth. 
And I don't want you to. 